We want to shine the light on those who are, you know, very talented. Shine the light. Shine the light. Because now we are in the time where you need to build an education, sport education. We should be able to identify some of these talents and then we groom them. Pleasure. That was a great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been enjoyable. This is amazing. I hope that it would inspire many people. That's what we try to do with the podcast. Hello and welcome to In The Game, Qatar's first sports podcast. And like always, we have a special, special, special guest on today. And Inga, thank you so much for joining us today. And would you introduce yourself, please? My pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And my name is Inga Stasilonita. I am Olympian and performance coach, working with executives and um, startups, founders, and uh, youth athletes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I had, I've had time over this last week looking at all your profiles, looking at what you do, and what an amazing job you, you do. Um, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you right back to the very beginning. And it's like, even if whatever age it was, but when did you have that love for sport? When did you realize that you had something special? Um, I didn't realize something special, to be honest, until just now when I started reflecting about my journey and starting new sports too. Uh, however, from the childlike days, I really was active kid, so I would join all the games that my friends play, and some of the coaches would notice my um, enthusiasm, so they would keep uh, um, forwarding me to other coaches to the higher level of the games, and it was volleyball, it was ballroom dancing, um, and uh, I loved it. I thought that it was how interesting when somebody sees something in me or thinks what I can do something more, because I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just showing up <laughs> and having tons of fun. So I think so that point was very, um, um, very meaningful where people keep supporting the talents or so some um, enthusiasm, not necessarily the talent, but enthusiasm for uh, kids, whatever they're doing. And yeah. um, and yes. I'm, I'm going to jump in there because I, I, you've, you've just said something really, really, really important. And with, with myself and I see talents out there and, and you say it's when people see your enthusiasm, they see your kind of the, how much you want to learn and they see talents that you've got and, and how important it was for you to be talking about these people now to say that there was a massive influence on your life. And I suppose that, that's a huge one, right? And I want people to understand that, that, that the influence that you've got when it comes to young kids or, or older kids or whatever age it may be, you've got a, a, a wonderful opportunity to help them out with, with everything that they're going to be doing in the future. And I'm glad that you brought that up very soon because it is down to those people that identify identify the talent, the enthusiasm. And that's what I keep on saying to everybody else. Build the individual first. Build the individual and they'll shine in so many different areas. I'm sorry. Please carry on. And this is the concept what is based everything what I do because if I remember from my life, just some random person smiling, giving a compliment or appreciating what you do, assess you, <laughs> It just uh, um, it expands how we experience the world and ourselves because, yes, if there's a nice family who supports you, but when you find some stranger, seeing that that uh, validation, it's, it really puts your feet on the ground in more stable way in understanding who you are, what you want to do, and how you want to proceed with uh, what you got. So uh, this influence of me and my coaches was tremendous, and especially when I met my uh, uh, javelin 
practice coach. He discovered me in the math, and then his love for the sport is just it was phenomenal. <laughs> and, and again, I'm going to kind of I, I I say this all the t- all, all the time. You're an Olympian. You've participated in Olympic Games, European Championships, World Championships, Junior Championships. You've been there. And you've done everything. And you're telling me that sometimes it could be just a smile that can make a difference. And I do, I, I say this to everybody. I say that you don't know what a smile and a handshake would do. And you're just backing that up with everything that I've said. But it's from you. You're, you're saying, listen, that can have a major influence. Um, I was lucky to have those people who smiled to me. <laughs> yeah. It, it's amazing, right? I, I, I kind of I want the world to know that just it's just by a smile. Come on, just help people. Just give them a smile, and it just gives them such a boost. Um, and uh, also, but but this coach um, in javelin showed me first time in my life where in life could be way much more than just earning paycheck because. Um, in my household, uh, the, the key of living was study a lot, study good, get a good job, and then have a family. And that's it. Like, this is the success uh, of, of the life that we can get and then keep pushing it uh, to, to have those um, stabilities uh, for ourselves. But um, here I meet the person who doesn't care about anything else besides just what is javelin technique, how to develop those bodies and minds and emotions to throw this thing so far. (laughs) And he didn't care about anything else. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I love these, these, these people. I really do love these people because they, they're changing lives and, uh, and obviously had a major effect on what you were doing. When, how did this, yeah, how did you was, get? How did you get? I'm sorry. What yes. happened when when all of us? Because I've done the javelin, right? And you've got to keep your arms straight yes. and you run up and and as a kid in school, but it was never something that because I couldn't keep my arms straight and it was always hurting, right? But what it always puzzles me how how all of a sudden that he saw that you could. What were you doing for him to see that you had a talent with throwing a javelin? It's a little bit different system in Lithuania, in post-Soviet uh, Union countries where um, Lithuanian Federation coaches, they need to have their athletes. So what they do usually, they go through high schools and spot a little bit more active kids or kids that uh, already can show some, some movements. And he heard what uh, in some physical education tests, I was really good at throwing tennis ball, whatever that uh, test was. And then he found out what I was playing volleyball. And especially for javelin, you need a more mature body uh, to to be able to learn the technique. So he already knew what I have some basics in physical activity and some maybe um, uh, what needs for the javelin movement, especially this <laughs> hitting movement. So he was on a quest to find me because from uh, whom he got this knowledge, I already transferred to different school, which was specialized in, in math and science. So he actually arrived to my math class and he said, you will be a challenge thrower. <laughs> Whoa, that's, and just from throwing a tennis ball. I love it. I, that, that, that type of stuff is just, life changing through just throwing a tennis ball and now you went on to be an olympian what a wonderful wonderful journey that would have been it, if it's not kind of- him i had i would have no idea what i'm capable of what the world could be for me so um he was tremendous person in in my life for sure oh wonderful now you did mention volleyball and i i used to play volleyball and i used to play it to a not a bad standard um but but let's just touch on that i love volleyball right it was a team sport and you had to all play together and it's like who could smash that ball with the serve and then the you had the the main players that you can do the digging and then setting and then the smashing again. It was a wonderful game, right? It 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 really was. So I love it. Looking back, I loved volleyball. 
Ah, so nice that you have that teamwork when you feel each other, when you set each other up, when you know who is best at what, and you keep creating those possibilities to really show opponent uh, what we got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the little signs, you know, there's a sign behind your back you put behind the, the, yeah. what the play is going to be. And and that 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 setter is going to, it's going it, to, I, I loved it. I love the volleyball. Even, it just perfectly set the ball and then you in the air just smashing that ball, <sighs> that sound, that that feeling. <laughs> oh yeah. And if you if you kind of you you blocked something, oh that was and it was it was that teamwork thing and you were all kind of doing high fives and congratulating everybody. I think it was in a, a very like you're in a small area to have six players in a small area and to kind of and to feel that teamwork was brilliant, right? It was brilliant. Absolutely. And uh, this is why it was for me a bit of a uh, standstill in deciding should I go to throw javelin and try this sport or not? Because uh, suddenly you go from the team sport to individual sport, and now you cannot hide. <laughs> If you're not feeling well, if you're not, if something is not clicking for you that day, you're benched and somebody else steps in and then you have this teamwork in, in the keep creating those better possibilities. But here, nobody going to bench me. <laughs> you, you, you took my, you took my question away. You took, taking my question away. I was rolling into it nicely. And, and cause I was going to say, how did you go from the, the team just to an individual? Because as you said, that must've been really tough. And especially with the mind, you can always sometimes rely on other teammates to, if you're having a bad day, but the mind from a mind perspective, it must've been a tough, tough transition. Uh, yes, because now whole game is you and only you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if you if you suck, you suck. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it was it was kind of I suppose it, and there's there's you're there on your own. You've got to get your preparation, your mind preparation right. You've got to get your body right. You've got to get feel it like your 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 diet. You've got to have certain things so that you can feel it. How difficult was it to go into that area where? where all of a sudden you become a real professional, like this is for real now, you're going on the world stage. How difficult was it to keep up with all those things? I know that you had your um, your coach and he must have been a, a tremendous person in, in your life. But how was it for you? How did you get yourself prepared? How was it? Did you rely on him so much or was it your, you had to get so much stronger? It's all about coaching <laughs> and environment because uh, to, to go to other levels, there is not just regular things what you can do and just to hope, but you just show up and be amongst the best and being able to show the best. Uh, one more thing what helped me to transition and why I transitioned to individual sport is that curiosity uh, of what is my worth. Because in the team, you don't really know. Is it uh, truly me or is it uh, the team who is keep helping me to succeed? And uh, it's hard to measure because uh, it's a teamwork. And I was very curious, so what is my true work? <laughs> so even how afraid and scary I was about not uh, succeeding in, in this uh, and facing myself, like maybe I am nothing. <laughs> Wow. Like you, you have that thought, uh, but that curiosity of, but it's interesting to find out. <laughs> yeah, it was. But I, I'm I, now with all your experience, looking back on that 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 decision you made. Do you ever regret the decision that you made to go into a single, like on your own, or do you wish you were back in that team? You can always go back. <laughs> But at yeah. least you have experience of, of uh, um, getting yourself in those position to learn more about yourself. And uh, to be honest, uh, I am still learning new sports. I uh, After I finished my career in javelin, uh, I was looking for new sports just to 
uh, be active uh, because body requires <laughs> still to to um, keep keep functioning at that level. Um, so I tried horseback riding, uh, which it was very interesting to learn uh, your relationship with this tremendous animal. Um, which was really interesting for me to learn more about myself. I've watched the video. I've watched the video, and you didn't just fall off once. There was quite a few times you fell off, but you still kept on persevering. Yeah, yeah. I, I questioned it was if it was a good idea for me to really try yeah. this <laughs> because I was kept imagining myself with all broken bones, and I was like, why? Why do I need this at this age? <laughs> But, but I love horses too. I think that horses are just wonderful, wonderful animals. I, I kind of, I always loved horses and I didn't know. And even my Chinese uh, sign is is a horse. So it's, uh, I just got this fascination with them. I, I just think that they're beautiful animals. You know, when, and, and you ask somebody else and you just ask a question, you like horses and you've got people that would say, oh, no, 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 I don't like horses at all. I'm quite the opposite. I see them in a beautiful light. I see them as is is strong, is is loyal. Um, but you've got to gain their respect. You've got to gain yes. their trust. So the, that's the what I think. I like. Yeah. And uh, what I learned with horses, what you cannot fake it. You cannot fake your presence yeah. because they sense where you're at, and they need to trust you uh, to lead them. Otherwise, if you are not feeling secure in yourself and they're not secure in leading others, then there's no way they're gonna submit to your wishes <laughs> of, of cooperation together because they don't feel safe. And these lessons are so permanent when I talk with. With my corporate clients about how we as the leaders presenting ourselves yeah uh, maybe it's a little bit of faking can be sometimes but especially with horses uh, it's impossible and you I, need to be true to yourself again uh, to, to recognize that i love talking with you this morning i love talking to you because i've got to be on there's a there's a i, I can even though it's over zoom I can feel a connection, right? And and I li literally can feel a connection because I keep on saying to people, don't fake it. Don't try, just, just come from within. Just tell, be as, just don't overcook it, right? Don't overcook it. Just let it come from within and let it out. And, and don't try to overcompensate or whatever. You've just got to be true to yourself and what you do. But it's it's exactly what you just said there, which was was fantastic. I'm going to ask you another question. I I, I want to get kind of because I'm feeling this this energy from you, and I want to take you back to that first time that you were in a competition, and and you were throwing that javelin. What was it like? What was those experiences that you went through, and all those thought processes? And um, this is also connect maybe my answer to your previous question about how you go from um, just being <laughs> like regular kid to competing at really high level uh, stages. And it's a process. It's a process of training, understanding what you uh, need to do during the event and also training for stress and training for confidence in what you do. So uh, my first competition, it's uh, represented that 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 training but what we put in with my coach step by step and uh, he, he was so good at um, showing me my possibilities and opportunities during the training but when i stepped in with my uh, um, peers to compete and actually the most I recall, and I'm fascinated by my, my, my response in that competition, it was first Lithuanian championship. I already had a few competitions, but very small ones uh, among our training groups, but never ever the, the actual, the best Lithuanian uh, girls. And there are some stars whom I've been watching, whom I know were so good at already competing in uh, high level stages. And uh, they, um, put you in a lineup before going into the stadium to actually compete. So we're going um, in the line and I'm almost in the back and looking into their backs who are like proudly going into this competing mode. And I'm looking like, 
And I'm saying to myself, you don't know me, but soon you will know my name. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that is wonderful. <laughs> but it was because how my coach set me up to, to, to have that experience for myself in a stressful situation where you finally showing up to, to match how, where you're at with them. But I knew I am just a beginner. I will get where they are eventually. But in this is this this statement represented my belief, what, what my coach gave it to me. Yeah. Now I'm I'm kind of because I, I love what you've just said, and I must admit, I I cut a little bit about myself is that, that I joined the forces. I, I I didn't get any qualifications at all in school except my whatever it was. Um and I joined the forces and I was like you. I've always kind of, because I didn't, I came from somewhere where I didn't have much or I didn't have, I just had my family, which was amazing, but I didn't have much to shout about. And I was always going to, whether it was a windsurfing championship that I was in or whether it was the other sports, the rugby, I used to do exactly what you just said. And I, I, I do feel a connection with you because I used to do exactly, you don't know me. But you are going to know me after this. You are. And many people know you now. <laughs> oh, dear me. And, and I'm still doing it to this day. I'm still doing it because I liked, I, I, I went through your profiles. And one of them that I, I wanted to kind of have a touch on was imposter syndrome. And it's like, I probably am one of those people that, that suffer from that quite, quite a lot. Where I don't feel worthy when I'm, I'm, I'm in my, I'm in my, um, I'm in my area. I'm in my arena. But for some reason, I, I, I start doubt. There's sometimes you doubt yourself. But you do talks on this, this imposter syndrome. Did you have this? In, and how did you overcome that? It's good to doubt yourself. It, it gets you in check uh, where you're at, where you want to go. The key is not to uh, be consumed by it. Yeah. And... Um, what is really important to note here when we say that you will know me, right? Um, for what? It's not because I am this great person, but for what I do or what I am trying to create. Yeah. I was fascinated not being as uh, the best thrower ever in what world uh, uh, seen, but having developed this amazing technique, this experience, what could be inspiring and interesting to analyze. So the focus is not on me as a thrower person or here as a talker, but about the experiences, what we're creating together, right? This knowledge, this, this ex mm, life journey is what we could be sharing in at workplace like for me now sports psychology performance psychology is this moving thing and knowledge what is interesting to share and i am more of uh, this guide who, who uh, maybe consume some information and then whatever I, I have my experiences to test it and then share with others for others to to perform at, at their own fields but i am only this passing <laughs> current yeah I, I i really do i, I kind of and I, I got another one for you because I, I i i love what i saw about you and what i read and and what i listened to and i love that other one which stood out for me was was take a breath and focus on what you know um and i suppose the extension to that is what you know and what you're best at my client said that when they asked, because he struggled with confidence, he had some traumatic experiences, what affected in, in personal life, what affected his leadership. And uh, I asked him, how do you define confidence? And this is what he said. And I thought, can I share? Because it's so brilliant. Yeah. Because those doubts uh, and imposter phenomena happens when we start uh, focusing on the bigger things where we have no experience. We don't know how we're going to be proceeding, if we're going to succeed or fail. And uh, by focusing on, like having a little bit of that awareness of the doubt where we step in is good, is healthy, what it, because it prepares us better to, to that extent. But then if we committed to stepping in, then we have to go and see, okay, what do I know? 
what's going to be uh, needed for this uh, step? Yeah. What experience do you have? Who else can support me yeah. in, in that journey, in that next step? And then you can do it. Because you ha you remind yourself of the tools what you have, and especially in the knowledge what maybe we tried to reemphasize, especially in the coaching, what we can do so much with with what we got. I, I, all those next steps are a matter of preparation and learning. I I love what you're saying, and as you said about clients, I say to clients all the time. And especially if they're going for a tough time, I, I just say, I say, when was the last time you heard the bird singing? When was the last time you took time out to go and listen to the things that are beautiful and wonderful and, um, and out there? When was the last time? When, when did you really take time out to, to envisage this? And they look up and they say, I can't remember the last time I did. I can't remember. And it, it's like just realigning yourself, recentering yourself to look at it and go, oh my word, I'm so into this. I've got to, be, I feel that I've got to always be working 24 seven, but then all of a sudden you've got to come to realize that, that, okay, give yourself a little time. And that's why I like, take a breath and focus on what you know. And, and I would just add on there and what you are best at, because that's what will get you through. And then just taking time out to listen to the, looking at the kids, looking at the things that you've got, which you don't appreciate at the time. And then look up and say, hey, you know something? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. And it's, it's really good, great. I, I, I love reading through. Now, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to, I'm jumping a little. I know I'm jumping a little, but I, I want to ask you about the, um, the most, the highlight, was it the, the, the participating in the Olympic Games? Was that the highlight of your, your career? And what was that like? What did you feel like at that, that event? Um, it's more, Olympics was more for others. Because I struggled a lot about uh, the title. Because to get to Olympics is so tremendously hard. But besides the hard work, you have to have luck. Literally, luck plays a lot of thing <laughs> in, in this journey. And I have a lot of tremendous athletes who are much, much talented and much better than me, world champions, who never had the chance to go to Olympics. And for me, I struggled before I'd been, I finally got to Olympics. Are they less worth of the athletes because they don't participated in Olympic Games? For sure not. <laughs> but in, in public, when you say I'm a professional athlete, the only question was is asked, are you, have you competed in Olympics? Do you have a medal? Otherwise, it's like, what? I'm not worth just saying I am uh, I'm in pursuit of, of this dream. So, um, yes, uh, it was more validation for my career as being Olympian, and it was uh, quite a journey <laughs> to get there um, in so many different ways. And I know for most of the athletes, they can recall uh, those uh, very complicated stories getting there. So um, it, it was kind of like beautiful um, ending of, of my career because this is how I ended uh, my, my journey because I, I went to javelin throwing not to earn the medal or being at the Olympics. It would be a beautiful cherry on top of the cake. But the key for me was to see what are my limits in this sport. And this is why I stopped this sport because I knew for me to advance this much, I need to do so much work and if it's worth it, because I knew if I'm going to go into business or entrepreneurship, I will put a little bit of effort and I will advance by a lot. I will learn so much more. So um, that was more for me as, as a payoff in, uh, in that journey. Wonderful. But of course, like uh, being in the stadium, being amongst the best, seeing in the Olympic Village, uh, uh, that um, cafeteria, it, uh, uh, in uh, at one table, and Federer and Kobe Bryant and um, some soccer players, famous, I think, so Ronaldinho. It was just like mind blowing. <laughs> mind blowing. I was what even before you said that. Even before you said mind blowing, 
I was going, mind-blowing. All these people that you were sitting with. Oh, my word, that would have been... Oh, I can only... And, and I love getting into your, your, your psyche. I love kind of trying to think what I would feel like. And I'm, I would be looking around going, am I here? Am I, and I'd be pinching myself to say, whoa, am I really, really here? And that leads me into the next question is, is did you ever imagine for one second with what you've achieved until today, did you ever visualize that? Did you ever dream that this was going to be your journey? Um, to go to Olympics, um, I only started dreaming when <laughs> my coach said we're after, in my first practice, we're preparing for Olympics. I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know what Olympics were. Only from the Freddie Mercury's song with <laughs> champions in yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barcelona. But uh, it was fascinating because so many people were glued to the one thing TV and I never seen that before. So I knew the, the, um, the importance of, of the event, but I didn't know what it is and what journey is. So I thought like, okay, <laughs> if you believe, fine. <laughs> but um <clears throat> And then when I start training, then I start seeing more clearly what it takes to get to those places. And um, after more, after especially sports career, and even in sports career, um, I was always fascinated by other fields of life, not only sports, but schools. So whenever I would go to practice at USC with my also tremendous coach, Dan Lang, he also one of the best. Um, I would talk about what I learned in school and he said like, I never seen an athlete who during warmups are so fascinated about the entrepreneurship school, about the learnings they had in the classes. So I always, uh, so when I went to Olympics, I also worked as a business analyst full time. So my whoa, whoa, Olympic whoa, whoa. journey was a vacation. <laughs> Yeah. Well done. Well done. But again, that's what I teach everybody. You've got to sometimes if you want to come, if you want to compete, if you want to get on in this world and especially in entrepreneurship, you're going to have to have a full time job and do something when you finish. You it's have like, to. You have you to. Have you have to. And then um, it's it was so against um, everybody's belief. But if you want to do something good, you only fo have to focus on one thing. Um, which I contest. I mean, some people, maybe they can do it, but you need to have distance from the thing what you're so engaged at to be able to balance that uh, drive, that passion in the right way so it wouldn't become desperation. Yeah. Uh, because it's only thing what you got as, as a person, as a financial means, as a whole your life when you start identifying completely with this event. Because this event, especially in sports, it has tremendous ups, but tremendous and really long downs. And for you to develop and advance, you really have to have capacity and support to go through those upsetting, really long moments because you don't know how your body is going to keep developing and which direction and which steps are going to lead to to that progress. And you have to just wait through that training and to keep seeing how how long time it takes for your body to develop. So for me, to answer your question, it was always dream about what lifestyle I want to have, what I want to spend my time during the day the most. And talking to amazing people like you today, to my clients, to experience these developments for others, for myself, and this is why now I'm a tennis. <laughs> I've got, I've got to be, I, I really have got to be honest with you. And, and, and I see this light go on when you start talking about the entrepreneurship and the coaching and the, and the, and, and all the things that you're doing now. And, and I'm so glad that I brought up about hearing the birds singing because you're listening to the birds on a daily basis. You've got reality in your life and you're doing the things that you love now. I work with birds singing. <laughs> <laughs> you are definitely singing. And, and oh, oh dear, it's a, it's a pleasure listening to you sing today because I, I'm taking so much from it. I, I, I've got a few more questions where we're going into entrepreneurship. I see that the MIT was, it seemed like it was a real big turner for you. It was a page turner where you were then no, now moving. You've just, the light bulbs come on and you're saying, this is where I want to go. Uh, entrepreneurship 
I, this is what I studied even at USC, but I never had the courage to take that step uh, further and do it on my own. And this is why I joined the company to be business analyst, to kind of learn. I took that um, journey, the similar how I trained for javelin, first learning in an environment and then creating my own technique, like my own company. So when I started creating the company, I saw this opportunity at MIT and another Thing what I took from sports, if you want to learn something, if it's something important, you have to learn from the best. Because if you're just going to learn on your own and from friends, <laughs> it's going to be really long time till you're going to find the essence of what, what, what this thing is. So, I mean, MIT has its name of going to the core. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, um, really happy when I got admitted to the program. And then uh, I was even more happy when they invited me to be part of the program teaching. Whoa. Uh, so um, learning that experience really got me more courage into step in into and finally trying and doing it myself. So being uh, amongst that support, what, the, what this journey created with the best minds, it uh, gave really interesting um, opportunities to uh, do it. <laughs> I, I kind of again it was a lo lovely part I watched the video it's a lovely part of your journey now that I'm I'm getting more of your journey um the the question that I'm going to ask you now is entrepreneurship easier than being an athlete <laughs> to be honest that would come but uh, what the MIT uh, uh, invited me to participate and it was way much harder than going to Olympics <laughs> 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 oh my word that it is something only one week and then i thought like uh, i discovered like and uh, transferred to another world <laughs> i i always say another thing that i always say because we've got a we've got a podcast called in the game obviously you're on it um and then we've got another podcast that we're just starting now which is called in the game uh, it's called i want to grow and i always say that entrepreneurship and, and um, athletes are, have got the same makings. They've got the same DNA. They've got the same determination, the, the, the passion, the, the, the kind of discipline. All those attributes that you need as an athlete, you need it as an entrepreneur. And, and it's just good to, to reaffirm that with you today. That's, that's brilliant. And this is me working with the uh, entrepreneurs and founders. What um, we uh, share and reinforce those lessons, especially from sports, where um, you need to really to balance and understand what means performance at the highest level in sustainable way. Because for us to working. Uh, like 100 hours, 150 hours a day, a week, it's it's not sustainable. So for athletes, to, it it's a means the same way, like if you go to practice every day for five, seven, nine, ten 10 hours, you, your body is not going to be able to develop. It's going to traumatize your body, and then you will be injured in really major way where you're going to be out of the game for rest of your season so yeah. kind of enforcing this message for my clients how to manage those demands those stress source those um, uh, energy levels in the right place in sustainable way because it's very long journey as becoming a high level athlete the same as being successful entrepreneur it's one thing after another what you need to deal with and then finally you get your ideation and then you find this val valuable valuable um, idea and solution where it fits in the market then <laughs> what about the building the team the scaling it's completely new game what you need to learn and it's even more time to to spend in it so to really understanding those parts what what sustain you through the journey this is what we kind of keep track of with with my clients i i i love everything that you're saying right now i love everything because it's it's part of my it's part of my dna it's part of the things that that really does mean everything to me and and i i'm taking from all to look up and say um hey listen take time out stop training so hard i love working seven days a week i love working and putting the effort in to others mainly it's always kind of trying to help others 
but I'm listening. I've got to just slow it down a little. I'm not getting any younger. So you're helping me so much with this, 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 this conversation today. And I've loved every second of it. And, and I just want to look up and because the, I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to take you back to the pandemic. What was the pandemic like for you and how did you cope with it? And was it something that you embraced and you grew with it? Um, and what you just mentioned about slowing down, kind of like uh, validating this in in a pandemic really showed us this concept of slowing down needing. <laughs> um, however, how we took it, it's, it's really different with what kind of perspective, because slowing down, it doesn't mean what your performance is going to go down or what, what those success is gonna be down. So to be honest, pandemic was really good for me because I'm really good with limits in making the most of the, from the limits. So I had a little bit uh, more complication what I discovered coming out of the COVID when we opened up because now suddenly free, no limits, okay, so what it means success now? <laughs> and I am a bit got confused <laughs> for myself because this redefinition of success is what we need to keep uh, spending time uh, based on where we at, what kind of environment we are. So if we are in learning, okay, what success looks like in learning mode. If we are in confined mode, like coaching <laughs> through the screen, what success looks like here, because it's so different when in person. Yeah. Um, when we have freedom, do anything what you want, then success is completely different. So we keep redefining with the realities where we live in, in understanding what it means, the journey steps, what we are trying to achieve. So that was my uh, um, COVID journey. <laughs> but but it, 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 again, it, it's kind of, it's you're, you're giving us real kind of insights and, and for us to then think about what you're saying right now to how we're dealing with it, how we're dealing with the no limitation and what success is. Um, my biggest, my, my, my final question, my final question, and it's, it's just flew by. It's just flew by. Um, my last question is, who's been your biggest influence and why? Uh, <laughs> my mom, for sure. My first coach, Antana Silias, is my second coach, Dan Lang. My mentors, whom I have now, my uh, uh, amazing colleagues from also Valor Performance, and I'm doing those uh, talks with Joe Jacoby. It's just this tremendous people who truly love what they do and care so much about... Uh, um, creating more meaningful uh, experiences and uh, to see and learn what we are as a humans and then what we're capable of uh, um, it, that expansion, but not uh, in, in doing things, but experiencing things at a deeper level. So uh, they in installed me their philosophies in me. Now I'm taking them and owning them and enjoying them tremendously. <laughs> Your energy, your energy has given me, I, I I, kind of, you know, in a normal work, there was, earlier on, there was things flying at me. I don't care about it anymore. I am going to fly. You've <laughs> given me my wings back and I'm going to kind of, after this interview, I'm going to fly and do whatever I want. You have been amazing. And you are amazing. It's kind of what a lovely, lovely time I've just spent with a true legend, and you are a legend because you are going out there making a huge difference to everybody else. You're, you're, you are amazing. I swear. I loved every second of it. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. Um, I truly enjoyed. It. It's really easy to be amazing when 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 we connect uh, on on the ideas and uh, wishing you to have fun with those flights. <laughs> I, I, and another thing is, I want you to come, please come back on our other podcast called I Want to Grow, because you will never stop growing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm really growing now with my tennis journey. <laughs> <laughs> I've, seen your, I've seen your Instagram. Keep it up. It's I'm like, failing big time. <laughs> uh, keep going. Keep going. It's like I could never get the serve right. I could never get the serve right. 
um, if you invite me, I will be there uh, with, with all joy. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on this podcast today. Everybody, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. There was some such valuable information there that if you just put a little bit of it into your life, things will happen that you will believe are magic, okay? Go and enjoy life. Go and love what you do and just keep on pushing forward. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.